Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, today we're going to go over some breath work. So I'll give you an overview of sort of my history with regard to my breathing, my personal breathing, and some of the people I've worked with because I think it's important to understand where I'm coming from when I talk about breath work. So the first thing is, as a child, I had asthma. In fact, they classified it as nervous asthma. So when I got anxious, I, I took a, 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 it may have been a, an anxiety attack. It may have been an asthma attack, but certainly it weakened my lungs as a child. I had to use a ventilator and inhaler uh, in my youth, in my childhood. Second thing is I, I got a lot of throat infections and sore throats and was off school quite a bit with that. So I got my tonsils out. And the third thing was that I had an allergy to dust. So if, I, if, I, if there was a lot of dust about it, I, I, I'd wheeze and I'd cough. Or chemicals, the same thing would happen when I was around any sort of chemicals. Uh, so I had a weak lungs as a child. When I, as I got older and I got into martial arts, it certainly did give me more strength in my lungs. lungs. But throughout my 20s, I, I had a lot of chest infections. So I was constantly having chest infections. Didn't stop me from training, didn't stop me from working, um, but it certainly restricted uh, some of the things that I could do. And that sort of started to die off in my 30s and 40s, but I still found it difficult to breathe. Uh, I didn't. I, I always thought I had more in me as far as my, my jiu-jitsu was concerned and my running was concerned and my, my strength training and, and cardiovascular system, but was never able to, to sort of meet the potential I thought I had. The second part of that was that I would sleep eight hours or more a night and wake up feeling really fatigued. And to me, that just seemed illogical that I should be uh, going to, to sleep at night, sleeping for eight hours and waking up really fatigued. And I always woke, and I, it was generally about three o'clock in the morning. I always woke up about three o'clock in the morning and either went to the toilet or just had crazy thoughts in my head. And I, I started sort of studying breath work quite a while ago but predominantly five years ago i brought a coach called steve maxwell over uh to do a course in the land now the, the the course was a four-hour course and it was just basically it was just on breathing and when i said to people i was bringing them over to take a breathing course people thought it's strange you know everybody knows how to breathe it's a simple thing we all do it but there's so much more to it than that uh, so it was a four-hour course and a week after the four-hour course because i applied the techniques and i did the things that he had asked me to do I uh, got my, my sleeping patterns went down from um, eight hours a night waking fatigued to six and a half hours a night and waking without an alarm. And to this day, five years on, I now sleep about six hours a night. If I go to bed at 12, I wake up at six. If I go to bed at half 11, I wake up at half five. And I don't use an alarm, I just wake. I no longer wake at three o'clock in the morning. And when I do wake, I wake fresh. And I'm ready to go. In fact, I get up at six because of that extra time to go up. I get for, go for a run and do my, my do a bit of meditation, and do a bit of breath work, and uh, sort of do some writing. So it really has added time to my day. But more than that, it's, it's made me feel a lot better in myself. I never really portray, per, portrayed myself as a nervous person or an anxious person, but I obviously was because I was always very anxious. Um, and while I seen it that I had to do everything for everybody, um, it was a part of that personality where I had to be constantly on the go because when I stopped, I started overthinking things. Uh, and that no longer is the case for me. So it's, it's had a massive effect on me personally, on my, my physicality. So I, my, my joints feel looser. I feel more relaxed. Um, I haven't had a cold or flu in years. Uh, specifically more so towards the, the end when I started really going into it. Uh, first year I did, I think I did get a cold one winter um, or flu. Uh, but really has, has helped me. My joints feel better. I don't have any pain anymore and I just feel better myself and I feel more relaxed. And this lockdown hasn't really affected me because I'm still in good shape and good form. So that's my background. I train with Steve Maxwell. And you can look him up, Steve Maxwell, uh, uh, just look him up on, on, on the internet and you'll, you'll see about him. Then I trained with uh, a guy called Patrick McKeown and he teaches um, the oxygen advantage system, which is based on the Butiego system, which again uh, is, is a breathing technique, a breathing style, uh, and really geared towards athletics more than anything else. Certainly it's general, but very good for athletes. And then I studied Butiego, and Butiego was a Russian doctor, and uh, he worked on a ward, going back in time, he went worked on a ward with um, people who were close to death, 
and they all had uh, heavy, fast breathing. Uh, and he tried to work, he, in his head he was trying to work out is do they have heavy fast breathing because they're close to death or they're close to death because they have heavy fast breathing. So he's trying to see which one came first. And he had very high blood pressure himself. So what he did was he changed his breathing patterns, uh, trial and error, and he found he was able to take down his blood pressure. And blood pressure is just one of the many things that is affected by how you breathe. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a test. Um, I know there's nobody here, so I just have to talk you through it. I'm using the, 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 the percentages I get when I'm taking a course, because I take physical courses and take online courses, I take Zoom courses, and, and I get to see everybody. So this is what I'm going to ask you to do. Put your right hand on your chest and your left hand on your stomach. And all I want you to do is take a deep breath. I'm not going to show you the way I'm doing it. I want you to do it yourself. So right hand on the chest, left hand on your stomach, and take a deep breath. Okay, so we take another deep breath. And then one more time, just take a deep breath. Okay, so again, you're gonna take the deep breath. You're gonna put your hand in your chest. You're gonna put your hand in your stomach, right hand, left hand. And you're gonna recognize whether you breathe through your nose or recognize whether you breathe through your mouth and whether your right hand moves predominantly or your left hand moves predominantly. And that's, that's the simplicity of it. Okay, so take another breath. Recognize whether it's nose or mouth. Recognize whether it's upper chest or uh, into the, the stomach. Yeah, and then now you've recognized then sort of now you really understand that you, whether you breathe predominantly through your, your mouth or your nose and that's not the whole story we'll go back on that and then if you if your right hand was moving then you're an upper chest you're breathing into the upper chest if your other hand is moving you're breathing into your, your stomach now i asked you to take a deep breath so if i asked you to dive into the swimming pool and dive deep you'd go down low uh, you wouldn't swim about the top so deep means low means down here so that's a deep breath okay so i'm going to take a deep breath so you can see I'm just going to come up a bit whoops okay so take a deep breath and there's one deep breath i'll take another deep breath and if you're looking at that you'll say well was he taking a deep breath because i didn't see it and that's the second part of that people don't understand the difference between a deep breath and a big breath a big breath is this. A deep breath just means that it goes deep into your lungs. Okay, so that's a deep breath. So I don't take more oxygen than I need. So the first thing is that we need to start getting into the lower part of the stomach. So we'll explain to you between this hand and this hand and upper chest and, and, and stomach breathing. So the first thing is if you're breathing into your upper chest, unfortunately, it's a panic breath. Okay, it's, it's a fight or flight breath. And fight or flight, basically, centuries ago, the only threat you had was a wild animal or another tribe attacking you. And when that happened, your body went into fight or flight. And it went into fight or flight because it took the blood away from the brain, it took the blood away from the stomach. It, it, it focused on getting you, getting adrenaline and your adrenaline and dopamine and all these things in your body so you could either fight or you could run. Uh, and that's great when you're in a fight or you have to run but it's not great living in that all your life and, and you should only be in it for certain times but a lot of people because they're upper chest breathing it's putting them into fight or flight this is what fight or flight does it shuts shuts down your um immunity your immune system doesn't get a chance because if there's a if you have a, an immediate threat your body's not concerned about living too long so it's going to send all the power to the fight or flight not to the immunity so you're not building immunity and you can see why that can be an issue the second thing it does is it uh, steals the, the blood away from the stomach. So your digest may not be good. So if you have digest problems, toileting issues, all that sort of thing, it could be because you breathe. The third thing it does, it takes uh, a certain amount of oxygen away from your brain. So you don't think as logically, you think more emotionally. And also if, you, if you're struggling with relationships, then you might find that it's because what happens as well is, you know, when you're in fight or flight, your, your brain isn't thinking about building relationships, it's, it's thinking about just survival. And to be honest, living in survival is just no way to live. It's just, it's, it's just terrible. Uh, so you're just getting through the days instead of investing time in days and enjoying your days, you're just getting through them. So that's upper chest for you. Down below, this is, is rest and digest. So as the name suggests, it's allowing you to rest recuperate, build muscle, build strength, build whatever you want to build. It gives you more oxygen to your brain. You become more open. Uh, you become more relaxed. You become less anxious. You become less stressed. 
uh, and all those things are, are down to your breathing style. Okay, and this isn't me just saying this because I have all the medical reports. Uh, I, I, I'm in a lot of uh, groups around the world. I'm a qualified uh, Buti Ego instructor, I'm a qualified Oxygen Advantage instructor, and they have portals that I can go on at any time and I can see all the, the medical research in this, and it's massive. Okay, so how you breathe dictates sort of how you live, it really does. So you can last three weeks without food, you can last three days without water, but only about three minutes without air. And when you're born, you take your first breath, and when you pass away, you take your last breath. And then between those two breaths, that's how you measure your life. And if you live that life in stress, if you live that life, life with anxiety, or you live it where you're waking up at three o'clock in the morning or four o'clock in the morning with crazy thoughts in your head, or you just can't get back to sleep because your, your brain's too active, or you're having uh, digestive problems, or you um, have asthma, or you have allergies, uh, all these things, high blood pressure, these can all be traced back to improper breathing. So it's really important that you, we start to work on your breathing. Okay, now, I can't tell you everything I know in, a, in such a short space of time because we're not gonna do a massively long video, I have other stuff to do. But what I will tell you is, you need to breathe through your nose. Um, it's a filter, so your nose is a filter, so it filters all, all the, 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 most of the, the sort of toxins out of the air. It heats the, the air as it goes in, because uh, again, with, the, with all viruses, but this COVID virus, the reason it, it, it lives in better in cold, this is why you get colds and flus in the winter, because they live in colder environments. Uh, when you breathe into your mouth, you don't heat the air before it goes into your lungs, so it's a colder environment. When you breathe into your nose, it heats the air, so it's a warmer environment. This breathing through your nose slows the air down. Um, what I would ask you to do is, um, just to do a self-test, put a timer on your phone, and put a timer on your phone, and then count your breaths. One breath in, one breath out is a breath. And just be relaxed, but don't focus on the breath. Just, just naturally breathe, okay? If it's through the mouth, it's through the mouth, if it's through the nose, it's through the nose, but just naturally breathe. Uh, and then, at the end of the minute, stop the timer. And that's your breaths per minute. And that's not the only game in town, so don't think that that's the only, only indicator. But, um, and you'll find that you were maybe breathing six, 12 breaths a minute, 16, 18, 24, whatever. So in my courses, I have people who have came and they've been breathing six breaths a minute. And I've had other people who are breathing, uh, I had one person who was breathing 80, 28 times a minute. So 28 times a minute is basically going, Twenty times, it's a lot of breathing, but that was her natural breath, and she was so panicky. Um, now, the norm for a normal human should be about twelve. So twelve breaths a minute is the norm. I breathe six breaths a minute, and I get more oxygen into my system with that six breaths a minute than most people will with twelve. Certainly, we we'll get more breath more in with people who are breathing eighteen or with twenty or twenty-four. So six is athletic. 12 is geared towards the, the general public. Anything over 12 is over breathing, and anything over 18 is chronically over breathing. And if you're chronically over breathing, I can assure you, you're gonna have some health issues. You just are. And you're probably gonna be anxious, and you're, you're gonna be stressed, because that breath leads you to that. Okay, if you look at the yogi, yogis, or the, meditate, the guys who meditate, they're always slowing their breath down. And if you look at somebody taking a panic attack, what are the symptoms of a panic attack? <sighs> Mouth breathing, upper chest. Okay, so we want to take you away from this and more into the calm of breath. Okay, so um, I'm going to finish off. Uh, I said I wouldn't do too long. So this is what I, I want to put across to you. You need to, one, start breathing through your nose. Never breathe through your mouth. And when I'm training, even when I'm doing my jiu-jitsu, when I'm out for runs, I always breathe in through my mouth, or sorry, my nose. Um, when I'm running, it's in and out through my nose. When I'm training, it's in and out through my nose until I'm really reach a, a heavy stage where I'm, I'm, I'm really working hard and then I breathe in through my nose and out my mouth. But I never, just, I don't do it. I don't breathe through my mouth. Uh, you learn so many toxins into your body. Um, so start nasally breathing. Um, second thing is slowing your breath down. 
and there's a lot of breathing things to do that there's apps out there or whatever or you can go on one of my courses or you can bring me in to, to work with your your athletes or whatever but there's so much out there as far as breathing is concerned it's unbelievable but um we're i'm on lockdown at the minute some people may watch this video later after the lockdown is over but you know as far as your health is concerned you know this virus what does it attack it attacks your lungs you know so if your lungs are healthy you stand a better chance uh if, if obviously if your immune system's shot your lungs aren't aren't as good as it could be so it's about creating a better immunity uh, and it's about getting healthy lungs so that's what i teach when i when i'm teaching my, my my breathwork courses and again it's very difficult for people to understand what it's about but it's basically about building a good respiratory system we breathe you know three minutes and most people are going to be dead three minutes most people are going to be dead um if i ask you to hold your breath you probably can't hold your breath in an in breath for more than a minute most people uh, unless they're doing stream normal. Uh, but, you know, yeah, we don't think about it. And hopefully just even sort of sitting with me and going through this stuff, it'll make you focus on your breath a bit more. Just a couple of things before I finish. 50% of children don't breathe properly, 50%. Um, it leads to uh, poor sleep, poor focus, poor concentration. It leads to increase in allergies and uh, symptoms of asthma. Uh, it also reduces uh, the oxygen that goes to their brain, so 20% less oxygen going to their brain. So if a child's sitting at school at three o'clock and they're not sleeping right, they're gonna be fatigued, is the first thing. The second thing is gonna happen is, because they're getting 20% less oxygen in their brain, they're not gonna be able to, to function the habit. A lot of kids are being diagnosed with attention deficit disorder, but really it's, it's an anxiety thing because of poor breathing. So um, it's really important for me, uh, you know, Martial arts is massive for me, but I have been more impactful in the last two or three years in people's lives by teaching breathing than have in the 40 years teaching martial arts. And I know I've been impactful because people sent me messages about martial arts and it's not detracting from that in any way. But what has happened is people after two days are saying, wow, this has changed my life. Uh, I did a, a session with one guy at four o'clock on a Thursday afternoon, Friday morning, he sent me a message and said, game changer, this changed my life because he had been taking panic attacks for quite some time. And I messaged him, this was maybe four or five weeks ago, I messaged him uh, two days ago and said, how are you getting on? Because we're in the lockdown and there's a lot of stress. He said, I had a wee bit of a, a sort of a, uh, almost went into panic attack, did your technique, I'm fine, everything's good. And uh, he hasn't had, a, up until that point, he hadn't had a panic attack. And he was, he was, since he did the first session with me, and he had been taking panic attacks three, four, five times a day. So uh, it's massive. I have another person who uh, went in a course, she only went in one of my four hour courses, three hour courses, and three months later she went to the doctor and he took her off all her um, asthma medication and took her off the asthma register. Now, this is a woman, I don't know what age she is, but um, she has sort of teenage son. But the point is that how can you have asthma one day and three three months later not have asthma that doesn't make it doesn't compute uh how that works uh, well it does compute to me but it doesn't compute the normal person wouldn't think you can actually get out of asthma and the statistics would say that you can reduce your ventral inhalers by 50 percent after two or three months which in itself is, is, is excellent because every every time you take an inhaler every time you take a, a tablet there's side effects to all drugs Okay, so there's not too many side effects to, to slowing your breathing down and, and taking yourself from panic to uh, rest and digest. So this, was, this would be equivalent to um, your sympathetic nervous system, and you can research that, sympathetic nervous system, and your parasympathetic nervous system. Okay, guys, uh, so that's me done. That's about 20 minutes. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. I'm going to post this on the World Jiu-Jitsu Federation page. Please comment below if there's anything, any questions you have. Uh, please contact me if you want to do any one-to-one. -one. Please contact me if you uh, want to do one of my uh, online courses. And uh, I'm posting this on YouTube as well. So anybody there, hit like, uh, leave a comment, whatever, all the stuff that, that people do. Folks, I really enjoy this. Um, I'm passionate about helping people. I'm a coach. I have been for 40 years. Uh, I could sit and 
watch Netflix and go out for runs while I'm in lockdown, but I'd rather be on here helping people, doing what I do, what I feel I do best. Um, I'm not the, the, the only game in town as far as this is concerned. I'm not the most gifted at it, but I certainly am passionate about helping people. So guys, uh, let me know if I can be of any help and I will see you all soon. Have a great day.